Hi kids, um, this <clears throat> is probably the last video I'm going to put up. I haven't decided if I'll do one more, but this one is on uh, solving circuits for the four variables that we're interested in, voltage, current, resistance, and power, and also learning about what those results mean for the circuit. Okay, so the big goal in this video is to learn how to make some predictions about what you're expecting to see in the circuit. Um, so we can see how the observable properties of the resistors and the wires in our circuit match up with the uh, variables and the relationships that we know. So how do you know what to expect to observe in a circuit? Well, we're going to do two things. The first is that we're going to use sort of common sense and our own logic along with that school day analogy to make predictions about what we're going to expect to be happening at each resistor. <clears throat> The second thing is we're going to make what's called a VERP table, and that is a table that uh, lays out the voltage, current, resistance, and power values for each part of the circuit and um, in a really clear way so that we can see where all the, va the variables came from and how, they, how their values compare to uh, other parts of the circuit. So there are a few common sense circuit rules which um, makes sense in terms of the conservation principles we know and also in terms of the school day analogy that you should always keep in mind when you are trying to figure out what's happening with the circuit. The first is that the electrons stay in the wires, okay, they stay inside the conductors. They can't escape out of those wires or out of the resistors um, and they stay in the wires that provide a route back to the battery. No electrons are used up or gained in the circuit and this is something that a lot of kids I think come into physics thinking that Electricity means we're using up electrons, but the principles of conservation and mass and charge tell us we can't create or destroy electrons. So we're not using up the electrons. What we're using up is the energy. Um, but what that means uh, functionally is that the same amount of current, which is electrons per second, uh, that comes out of the battery has to go back in the other side of the battery. We can't gain or lose any current throughout the circuit because otherwise we'd be violating those conservation principles. As far as a school day goes, uh, this means that the same number of kids that leave the house have to come home at night. Okay, We're not going to gain any extra kids during the school day and we're not going to lose any kids either. So it works in that analogy as well. The second common sense rule is that the total energy used up every second in the resistors is exactly equal to the total energy produced by the battery every second. Uh, this is a manifestation of conservation of energy. So what this means is that those electrons get their energy at the battery and if the electrons get 20 joules of energy every second from the battery that means somewhere in the circuit those electrons are using up every bit of that energy so they're using 20 joules every second uh, at the resistors so that when they return to the battery they have none okay you got to spend all your money spend all your energy before you come back home uh, this analogy makes sense to you because you you start off your day with no energy when you wake up in the morning um, and then you slowly over the course of the day burn off that uh, that food that you ate for breakfast and then by the time the next morning rolls around you're really hungry you don't have any energy again so that's kind of the same idea as this rule so the most simple case would be a single resistor circuit this would be a circuit that has just a single battery in it with some wire connecting it to a bulb in a complete circuit you'll notice that we connect to both ends of the battery here um, and if we want to kind of be able to describe in uh, mathematical terms what's happening in this light bulb, we're going to make this VERP table below to help us lay out the values of those variables. So V is voltage, I is current, R is resistance, and P is power. So you're going to set up your table like this, and every resistor in the circuit should get its own column. If there's more than one, you'll add a column for the total, which is kind of like what's happening at the battery, but since we only have one resistor here, it's pretty straightforward. It's the only place that energy is going to be able to be used up in the circuit, so we only need one column. And you'll start by putting in the values that are set by the components. So first, I'll look at my battery and I'll see what voltage it has. In this case, I have a 12-volt battery, so I'm going to put in 12 as the voltage for the bulb because however much energy every second, however much energy each electron is getting at that battery, the only place it has to use that energy is in the light bulb, right? If this was a school day, you got 12 energies in the morning from your house, you're only taking one test because you're going through one bulb, you might as well use all 12 of those um, energies in that single bulb. <clears throat> 
The second thing you should know from the beginning is the resistance of the bulb. You can measure this using a multimeter, which we'll show you how to use in class. But um, let's just say we pulled out our probe, we measured the bulb, and it said 2 ohms. As soon as you have two variables in a column that you know the value for, so this column, this bulb column here, we know that we have the voltage and the resistance, we can now use our two equations to calculate the other variable. So we have an equation, I equals V over R. So if I is equal to 12 volts divided by 2 ohms, uh, that should give us a current of 6 amps. So we can predict that based on that voltage and that resistance for this circuit, there's going to be 6 electrons every second that leave the battery. Uh, 6 electrons every second are pushed through that light bulb. 6 electrons every second are returning to the battery because we can't gain or lose electrons, just like you can't gain or lose students in a school day. The power is equal to the voltage times the current. So um, we've got six electrons moving every second. Each electron has 12 joules of energy, or 12 volts. Uh, that means every second, 72 joules of energy get dumped into the light bulb, okay? Right, six times 12. It's the number of electrons times the amount of energy each electron has. That tells me how much power um, is, is going into that light bulb and available to be converted into other things like light and heat. So we're going to move up in complexity a little bit from single resistor circuits into circuits that have multiple resistors. There are fundamentally two different ways of hooking up more than one resistor in a circuit. The first way is known as a series circuit. Of course, you know the word series means to do something one at a time, back to back to back to back, like a series of books or a series of movies or the World Series. And that's how it is in resistors in a series circuit. So uh, in that drawing on the left, you'll notice there are two light bulbs. In order to get back to the batteries, the electrons have to go through both of those um, in turn, so one after the other. The circuit diagram on the right shows a battery, looks a little different, don't worry about it, but the electrons leaving that battery actually have to go through four resistors. So you can put as many resistors in a series circuit as you want. So what um, kind of conceptual things can we say about uh, how a series circuit is different than a circuit with just a single resistor in it? Well, as I mentioned a minute ago, the electrons have to go through all the resistors before returning to the battery. What this means in terms of calculating values in the circuit is that there's the same current through each bulb because if four electrons every second get pushed out of the battery, that means four electrons every second are getting shoved through the first light bulb, four electrons every second are getting shoved through the second resist light bulb, and four electrons every second are going back to the other side of the battery. Uh, in order to keep conservation of mass, etc., that has to be true. The second thing that we can say about series circuits is that um, the electrons that leave the battery with some energy, they're going to use some of their energy in each bulb. Okay, This would be like a school day where you're taking two tests. It doesn't make any sense to use up all your energy on the first test and fail the second test. It also doesn't make any sense to try to skate through the first test without using energy and, and save it all for the last test. So it doesn't matter where um, the light bulbs are. It doesn't matter how close they are to the battery, those electrons are going to save up their energy and um, split it around to all the light bulbs in the circuit. Now they don't necessarily split that energy evenly. Uh, just like you would in a school day, the electrons are going to spend more energy or use more voltage on the higher resistors, on the more difficult test, if you will. So when electrons pass through multiple light bulbs in series, they, they do save some of their energy for each resistor, but they're going to use most of their energy or more of their energy on the harder resistors. The other kind of circuit is known as a parallel circuit, and if you look at those drawings, you'll see how this circuit is different. Instead of the electrons being forced to go through both of the bulbs in the circuit, the electrons actually have a choice. They can either go through the top bulb and go straight back to the battery, or they could go through the bottom bulb and go straight back to the battery. Now, of course, you can imagine some crazy path where those electrons did some figure eight or something and went through both light bulbs. But electrons are pretty logical little little guys. You know, if they go through one light bulb and they see a path back to that um, positive side of the battery, there's no way they're going to choose to go through another light bulb just for the sake of doing it. So once you get through a light bulb and if you see that path back to the battery, you're just going to take it. Um, 
just like you probably wouldn't choose to take a second test if you didn't have to, if you could go home without taking it. You'll notice the same thing in the circuit diagram on the right. We got a battery down there in the middle and there's a split. Okay, the electrons leave the battery. There's a junction where they can choose one of those three paths. Now, it looks like that middle path is uh, the shortest path, but I'm going to remind you that electrons don't care at all about the length of the wire that they're traveling through. So um, the shape of the paths, the length of the wire doesn't make any difference in the path that the electrons choose. Uh, now, there is something that does make a difference um, about which path the electrons are going to choose. Obviously, the electrons would choose, most of the electrons are going to choose to take an easier test if they have a choice. So if R1 and R2 and R3 have different resistances, what you'll find is that the current splits. There's going to be some current through each, so some electrons will choose every path. They don't all go through the easier path, but um, more of the electrons are going to choose to go through the easier path, just like if you had a choice between three tests, a physics test, English test, and a, uh, I don't know, basket weaving class. I shouldn't say that because basket weaving is pretty hard for me, but at any rate, um, you know, more students would probably choose to take the easier test, but there might be some kids that would choose to take physics and um, some kids that would rather do English. So all three of those paths are going to get some um, electrons, but more go to the easier one. As far as the voltage goes, since each electron is only going through one resistor, so they get all their energy, they have to go through one resistor and then they can go straight back to the battery, um, that electron is going to use up all of its energy in that one resistor. So it doesn't have to share it because it's only going through one resistor. So we're going to make a VERP table with the series circuit and talk a little bit about why all the values in this table make sense. Uh, so here's a series circuit. You'll notice the resistors are back to back and um, I've given those resistors values so we can plug it into our table. Um, the table in this case is going to be a little bit more complicated. There'll be three columns, one for R1, which is my first resistor, one for R2, which is my second resistor, and then another column that is uh, going to be the total voltage, current, resistance, and power values for the whole circuit. You can also think of this as uh, what's happening basically at the battery. So filling out this table is sort of a Sudoku puzzle. We've done those in the past where you first put in the obvious values that you know, and then you start um, with, with your logic and with your equations figuring out the other values in the circuit. So I usually start by putting in my two resistors because uh, I can read them right off of there. And the voltage is going to be the total voltage because that's the total amount of energy that each electron is going to get is 12 volts. Uh, what we're really trying to do here is get two values in a single column, because if we can do that, then we can use our equations. But we don't have that yet. We only have one value in each column. So you've got to kind of think logically about this circuit. Um, and what I start to think about is if this was a school day and I had to take two tests back to back, would the total resistance in that circuit be more or less than just taking one test? And it should be logical that it's more. Uh, how much more? Well, if I have to take a test level one and another test level two, uh, it should make logical sense that the total difficulty of the day is level three. So you can, um, in a series circuit where you have to take both tests, you can uh, assume that the total resistance is going to be the sum of the individual resistances. Now that we have two values in that total column, column we can go ahead and calculate I. I is equal to V over R, so 12 over 3, which gives me 4 amps and power is going to be equal to I times V, so 48 watts. All right, now we got to do um, a little bit of physics because we've got one column done, but we still don't have two values in the other column. So we need to think about what we understand and know about series circuits. If you think back to the last slide, you'll remember that the current is the same through each of those resistors because there's only one path for those electrons to take. So we can't gain or lose electrons. That means however many resistors are coming out of the battery, which is 4 amps, must also be going through the first resistor and must also be going through the second resistor and coming back to the battery. So we can fill out all of my current values because um, in a series circuit, the current has to be the same everywhere in the circuit. Now that we've got two values, we can use our equations. Um, I equals V over R. So four equals uh, unknown voltage divided by one, which means uh, that R1 is gonna be four volts. And for R2 in that column, it's going to be 4 equals some unknown value divided by 2, uh, which is 8 volts. Mm -hmm. So there's actually more voltage being used up um, in that second resistor, which should make sense if you think about uh, that as a harder test. 
You can also calculate the power. So 16 watts is 4 times 4 in the first resistor, and 32 watts is 4 times 8 in the second resistor. So let's look at each of those um, each of those rows one at a time and just talk briefly about why it makes sense. Uh, the voltage row makes sense because, as we mentioned earlier, um, we've got to use up the 12 joules of energy we have. So the total is going to be 12. We have to add up to 12, which we do, 4 and 8. And you notice that the electrons use a higher percent of their energy in the more difficult resistor. Uh, specifically, if that resistor is twice as large, so 2 versus 1, we're going to use twice as much energy, twice as much voltage in that resistor as well. The current makes sense because, as we mentioned before, there's the same number of electrons moving through each location in the circuit every second. This is a conservation of mass and charge. The resistance values all make sense because the total circuit has more resistance than the individual resistors because each electron has to go through more than one resistor. Uh, so it's a tough school day. And the power makes sense because more power is used up at the larger resistor. And the reason why we notice that is because even though the same number of electrons are going through each resistor, each electron is dumping more of its energy in that big resistor. So um, that means there's more power there. If these were light bulbs, that would be a brighter bulb. If these were toasters, that would be a better toaster. Um, but the one thing that is always true on every circuit you do, whether it's series or parallel, is that the total power is going to always equal the sum of the individual powers. This is a conservation of energy at its finest. We have to have the total energy being produced by the battery every second used up in the circuit, every second. So let's go through the same process for a parallel circuit. I'm actually going to put the same battery in there and the same two resistors in there, 1 ohm and 2 ohm, so that we can see how this uh, looks different for a parallel circuit. So there's your VERP table set up the same way, R1, R2 in total. Uh, and I'm going to start off by putting in the, the values, same as I did before. So R1 is 2 ohms, R2 is 1 ohm, and the total voltage is 12 volts. Now in the last circuit, the next step we took was to add up our total re resistors to form the total resistance. Uh, but in this case, it doesn't make sense to do that because um, this is like a school day where you have a choice between tests. You can take a difficulty two test or, or a difficulty one test. So the school day as a whole isn't harder than those tests. In fact, it's easier because you're actually getting uh, a choice of what to do. Those electrons have two paths to go down instead of just one. Uh, so we cannot just add up our resistors to get the total, um, which would normally help us solve a series circuit. So we have to have another approach. Um, so if you remember what's going on in parallel circuits, you'll remember that those electrons leave the battery and they're going to get a choice of paths. They either go through R1 or they go through R2, not both. And since they're only going through one resistor, they only have one place to use up their energy, which means they're going to use all 12 joules of energy that each electron is getting in the resistor that they choose to go through. So the voltage for R1 and R2 is going to be 12 volts each. Those are different electrons, okay? So it's not like, you know, one electron is using 12 in each. It, it wouldn't work that way because the electrons only have 12 total. But the electrons that choose R1 can use all of their energy there, and whichever electrons choose R2 uh, can use all of their energy in R2. So now we have two known values in um, our R1 and R2 columns. We're going to go ahead and plug our values into our equation, I equals V over R. So the current through R1 is 6 amps. I equals V over R, current through R2 is 12 amps, uh, the power for R1 is 72 watts, and the power for R2 is 144 watts. From here, we need to get at least one more value in our total value column. Now, there's actually two things we could do here. Um, we could remember that the current split, so we had some electrons coming out of the battery, and then at that junction, six of them went down through R1, 12 of them went through R2. Um, it should make sense that that means that 18 of them had to come out of the battery in order to um, in order to meet those other requirements. We could also have done it with power. We could have said, uh, well, if we know we're using 72 watts in R1 and 142, 144 watts in R2, uh, the total power is always going to be equal to those two powers added up um, by conservation of energy. So we could have done the power instead of current. You can do it either way that you prefer. Um, as far as finding R, you're going to be using your I equals V over R equation. So with the 18 amps as your I, okay, from that column, 
equals 12 divided by the unknown r. Uh, this is a situation for using cross multiplication. I'd recommend that you guys try this and make sure you're comfortable with it. So 18 equals 12 over r. You multiply um, the sides of the cross and you get um, 18r equals 12. Then you divide both sides by 18 and that's how you get 0.7 for the r. As we mentioned before, the P is going to be the sum of the other two P's, which you will also find if you multiply together the V and the I for that column, which is 216 watts. As far as the trends that we see in this table, the voltage value should make sense because each electron uses all of its energy in whichever path it chooses. Those are different electrons choosing each path, but um, since they only have to go through one resistor, they can use it all. The current should make sense. Uh, what you see there is that more electrons are choosing to go through R2. So even though R2 is like further away and a longer wire, that stuff doesn't matter. What does matter is that R2 is an easier test. Um, but note that not all the electrons go through R2, okay? Um, twice as many will because it's twice as easy of a test. So we get uh, 12 electrons per second going through R2 and six electrons every second choosing to go through R1. The R values make sense because the total circuit has less resistance than the individuals. And that, this actually is probably the one that makes the least sense to most people. Um, but, you know, sometimes I think about this as two doorways into a building, right? There's, it's easier to flow. It's easier to get more people through if there's two options, easier than even the easiest of those doorways. So you'll notice the total resistance value is always less in a parallel circuit than either of the individuals. It's, it's less less resistance than the individual values because each electron has a choice. And the power should make sense because there's, in this case, more power at the smaller resistor, uh, more power at the smaller resistor. Sorry, that doesn't read quite right. Uh, because there's more current through it. And you will always notice that the total power equals the sum of the individual powers due to conservation of energy. Quick slide to compare and contrast some of the conclusions on series and parallel circuits. In series circuits, um, we found that the higher resistor bulb was brighter because more voltage was equal to more power. But in parallel circuits, the lower resistor bulb is brighter because more current is also equal to more power. Um, the real lesson I want you to take out of here is you can't always just say a certain bulb is always going to be brighter. It depends on how those bulbs are hooked up to decide which of two bulbs is going to be brighter. There's nothing in a bulb that determines it, its brightness. Um, it's the thing in the bulb combined with the way the bulb is hooked up to decide who's brighter. Um, if you remember back to your power values, or you can look in your notes, um, the series circuit has much more overall resistance than the parallel circuit. Um, and since it does, that means the series circuit has a lot less overall current, a lot less electrons are going through that circuit because it's a really yucky, ugly, hard test day compared to the parallel circuit. And that means that um, in a series circuit, we have a lot less overall power being used. So a lot less energy every second is turning into other forms of energy, which can be good if you're trying to like conserve a battery and not have it burn out as quickly. Um, however, in a parallel circuit with more overall power, it's going to draw that battery down quickly. But of course, the, um, the lights in that circuit or whatever devices are hooked up are going to be um, much better, much higher functioning. So usually parallel circuits are the kind of thing you see in your house for, for that reason and for some other reasons. Other, one of the main other reasons is that in a series circuit, if you have a single switch in that circuit, it's going to turn on and off all of the bulbs in the circuit because if you break that connection, uh, the electrons can't get back to their uh, battery home. So um, all of the light bulbs are going to be off. But in a parallel circuit, you could actually have individual switches in each pathway so you can control parallel lights individually. So you can probably think of some places in your house where you have a single switch that controls all the bulbs and probably different places in your house where you can picture um, individual switches for each bulb. Summary of this somewhat long video. Um, circuits with multiple resistors can be hooked up in series or in parallel. And to figure out what's going on, you got to use common sense and logic and um, your Sudoku skills with your VERP tables to learn um, a little bit more about what's happening in the individual resistors and the circuit as a whole. But when you calculate it, every value that you calculate should make sense on a conceptual level. So don't just trust your calculator. You got to think about the physics um, and be able to explain why the values are what they are using all the relationships and the equations that we've learned about.
in our past slideshows. Thank you.